Hey, hello there. So um, tonight I'm going to talk about this question, 670, maximum swap. So the question is as follows. We have an integer. It's a non-negative one. Uh, we can perform a swap operation to change the, to swap the two digits within this number. And we can either not to do it at all or do it uh, at most the once. And uh, we want to find a swap such that the, the resulting integer number can be as large as possible. And uh, for the function, it has to return the maximum number that we can get. As the example, we have uh, 2736. The swap is to swap the 2 and 7. We make transform that number into 7236. So uh, that's the largest that we can get by doing one swap. Uh, the second example is 9973. Uh, pretty much that all the digits here are sorted from largest to smallest uh, from left to right. Um, there is no way that we can do a swap to, to make the number larger. So as a result, we choose not to, to, put, to do this swapping operation and just return the number itself. So um, the, w the way to, to solve this, uh, a brute force way of solving this is to check uh, all the possible swaps and just find the, just keep track of the maximum number that we can get by uh, in all those possible swaps. It's going to be a square time. And then, um, um, you know, because you consider all the pairs of, uh, um, uh, basically all the pairs of uh, locations here and do the uh, testing all the possibilities, it's going to be square time. Uh, and um, and actually, since that uh, the there's only one way pretty much to get this maximum value number uh, by doing this one swap, uh, we actually want to I directly identify the locations we do the swap. So like the the two seven three six cases, we want to directly identify these two location. Uh, let me tag it as left and right. And uh, so let's talk about a little bit more generous case here because this one is, uh, you know, you, you directly find those two numbers and it becomes not so obvious. So let's uh, make the example a little bit uh, uh, complex. We have some numbers like uh, 72,636. 72, so the maximum number we can get by performing one swap operation on this number is going to be uh, swap this two here and the rare last the six. Um, indicated by the left and right uh, uh, variable uh, you know characters here the um, the number after swapping is going to be six and two so what's the property of this two here and what's the property of this uh, six here so if we only look at the, this portion uh, two six three six um, two is actually the first number if we look at the, the portions of the number uh, you know, from the self, from this digits towards this right, it's only it's the first one that's actually smaller than the maximum. Uh, you know, smaller than some of the digits that towards the right. And when we look at the first uh, seven here, or even if it's a six, um, there is no digits towards its right that's uh, larger than it. So there's no swap we can do to make this thing larger. So two. Uh, the left uh, num digits is going to be the first one that uh, is smaller than certain digits towards the right. And uh, uh, the 6 here is going to be the last occurrence of the maximum digits uh, from 2 and, to and, and towards the end. So, so basically we want to find these two things. Uh, you might be attempting to write the uh, search from left to right. Uh, so we can, you know, in the first for loop, we go from left to right at the, each location. And the, in the nested loop in there, we check on the digits that's uh, afterwards and uh, try to find if we have a number larger, a digit larger than uh, the, the i uh, number. And um, uh, if we f do find some larger one and we find, uh, we, we then, you know, need to nail down to the last uh, last occurrence of the largest uh, possible digits and uh, once we get that we can do a swap um, so that that's um, that's actually not very ideal because we essentially have a nested loop so that's going to be uh, square time uh, that's uh, no better than the uh, brute force solution so the actually the good 
order of uh, scanning the number is actually from right to left. So, so when we scan from right to left, we want to keep track of the maximum number we see so far, uh, which is this one um, in the beginning, of course. And then we move towards the left. We find a uh, new digits that's actually smaller than the max. So just looking at the, the last two digits here, we already find that we can actually do a uh, left and right swap to make this number larger. Uh, that's by swapping the three and six. And then we keep moving towards the left. We find another six, which is a smaller, uh, which is equal to the current maximum. So uh, swapping these two numbers doesn't make sense. But then we find a two here. So since two, it's, a, it's a also smaller than the maximum, but it's more towards the left. So the digit here uh, is more significant. Uh, we can actually just move the left candidates of the left digits to that location. And, and then we basically just find out uh, the, uh, we pretty much found the two digits that we want to do the swap. Um, yeah, so the idea is really to swap from right to, uh, to scan the digits from right to left. Keep track of the current maximum. Whenever we find a new digits that uh, smaller than the maximum, we update the candidate for the left and right digits. So that's uh, taking care of uh, how we find the two locations. Then it's the actual swap. How we perform a swap that's uh, going to be constant time. Um, you know, actual constant time. So that's by doing arithmetic. Uh, we can basically uh, subtract uh, 2,000, add back uh, 6,000, minus uh, 6 and plus 2. So uh, bes uh, beyond the actual digits 2 and 6, we also need to uh, keep track of its location in the, um, in, the, in, the in the number so that uh, we can, uh, you know, basically um, multiply by 10 to the whatever location that it, the, the digits it is so that uh, you get back to this uh, full full number 6,000, uh, 2,000 and 6,000 here. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much it. Um, I guess there is a, another, so, so if we have this um, um, this is a 4 here, this is a 1 here, uh, or if we starting with 0 index, this is the third location Location. This is uh, the zeros location. Uh, the formula here is um, num minus. Uh, so this is uh, the left plus right multiplied by ten to the three minus. Um, so this is. Um, oh, sorry. This is uh, subtract. Um, we can also put uh, left here. So that's a uh, plus left uh, minus right multiplied by 10 to the zeros. Um, and we can also do a, a little bit collection of terms just to simplify this uh, uh, arithmetic a little bit. So we pretty much do Hmm. This subtract. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry. Doing live arithmetic is um, difficult. Uh, programming even harder. So this is uh, the formula to do the swap. Once we identify the digits and their uh, relative locations in the in the number, so that we know the power to raise ten two to um, you know have the formula works so that that's pretty much it so the yeah just recap real quick real quick recap uh, we're gonna scan the digits from right to left just keep track of the uh, maximum digits and its location whenever we see the new digits we are looking at right now it's actually smaller than the maximum that's indicating we can perform a swap to make the large, a number larger and then we update uh, the left and right digits with their location uh, when we basically pa doing one pass through the whole number uh, we have already identified the left and right digits we want to do the swap 
uh, once we identify that, we use this formula to do a arithmetic uh, calculation to get the the, um, the integer that we can get by performing the swap. So we avoid any kind of a physical uh, swap, like uh, if you were converting this number into strings and converting those characters, uh, swap those characters and then convert them back. That, that would be really wasty. So this this is going to be much better. So uh, with the uh, so it's a it's a linear time algorithm and constant space. So with that out of way, um, I'm just going to code this question now. Uh, so the the uh, we initialize some variables, the maximum digits, which uh, initially to be a negative one because we haven't scanned at the, any number yet. Uh, we use something that's uh, le less than the uh, that's um, never be never possible. Uh, you know, we have zero to nine. Negative one is just never possible. Um, location it's also negative one, and uh, we got uh, the uh, there's one thing that we need to initialize to be some impossible values, which is the left one. So if we never find such a possible swap. Uh, the left uh, is going to be negative one, so that we know we need to return the case like a nine thousand nine hundred seventy three. And we just going to have some placeholder for the right and their locations. So then you just uh, do one pass scan from right to left. Uh, the way we do it is to, um, you know, have the number modulo by ten, and to get that uh, very last digits, and uh, we subtract a number by ten, and only taking the uh, quotient, uh, only taking the quotient part. Um, so that's uh, that's you know being pretty much just get rid of the last digits we just ex uh, just extracted. So it's a for loop. Uh, we have the current location, initial location, to be zeros, digits here. So that uh, when we get back this number, we just use the digits multiplied by ten to the location's power, so we can get back to two thousand six hundred or whatever that you have. Uh, we don't want uh, to totally erase the number, so we get a copy of it. So yeah, so we're moving one location towards left every time, and uh, we get rid of the very last digits uh, in each uh, iteration. So the current uh, digit is going to be the number mod by ten. Um, and we want to update the maximum. Uh, if we you know, if we see a larger number, we want a strictly larger number. We want to update this maximum. Otherwise, uh, we want to be. We want uh, if the current digits is actually uh, strictly less than the uh, previous uh, seeing maximum digits, then we can do a, a swap. Note that uh, this will leave out uh, the situation when the two digits are the same. That will be you know six and six, uh, because that's a uh, swap or the the swap doesn't make sense. And updating the current maximum doesn't make sense either in that situation. So uh, in this if else uh, kind of structure that case will just continue to the next iteration of the for loop uh, if that's the case we updated the left and right candidates So after this one pass from right to left, uh, we should have identified the. Uh, if we 
did find a possible swap, L digit uh, here would be uh, larger than negative one. Uh, if that's not the case, we should return the number, the input number itself. Otherwise, we'll do this arithmetics. So it's a uh, so it's a uh, subtract left uh, minus right using the digits and then is to multiply that by convert to integer the the uh, powers the 10 to the some powers uh, the difference between those so it's the three is the left locations uh, left digits location subtract by power 10 to the right location um, yeah so that's uh, pretty much the code um, compact a little bit it's too long here let me try to run it through example okay so this uh, this example works uh, 9973 and my own example, 72636, uh, maybe some other ones, 000, zero, 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 zero uh, 99901. Hmm. Okay, it looks, looks uh, okay. Uh, what about uh, just a single, single digits in there, like nine here? Well, it works too, okay. So yeah, I'm um, just gonna try to submit this one. Okay, it's a, uh, it's a uh, working and uh, um, I, I think it's optimal. It's a uh, linear time and constant space. Um, yeah, I, I do find that uh, the solution portion, if you check on the website, uh, uh, it's it's not uh, this this solution. It's um, a little bit wasty than this one because it's, it's a scanning from left to right. Um, so the the correct way, I think the optimal way is to scan from right to left. Um, yeah. So that's the question. Um, yeah, 